Good day, folks. Welcome back to the channel. So what do we got? This is a letter signed by Napoleon himself. That's really cool. This is the type of seal they used back then, so it does look right for the period. OK, it seems like it's from a pretty legit company. What do you want for it? Well, you know I'm going to say like 10 grand. 10 grand's just way too much. You're going to have to come down quite a bit, man, to 1,500. That sounds low. How about uh, five? I'll give you 2,000 bucks for it, man. That's the best I can do. I didn't pay that much for it, so let's let's do it. You just bought it? Yeah. Have you had it checked out by anybody? No, it looked right to me. Why don't you go down and see Greg, see what he has to say. This is it, man. It's supposed to be an original document signed by Napoleon. So what we've got here is very clearly a replica of a very important document. <clears throat> well, there goes $2,000 down the drain. Today we will show you all the moments when Rick experienced the loss on Pawn Stars. Hey, what do you got here? The biggest collection of pawn shop movie posters you'll ever see. All the one of a kind. All pawn shop movies. movies. Yeah. This is cool. Damn, this one's huge. That's cool. You know, all in all, they're in pretty damn good shape. So you want two grand. Yeah? I'll give you a thousand bucks. For all four? For all four. Now these are nice guys. You don't usually see this anymore. I'm assuming you uh, are going to be selling these. That's what I do, man. How much do you think it's worth selling for? I'll do a uh, fifteen hundred for it. Okay, I could probably do th fifteen hundred. Sweet, these look nice, guys. Where's the other one? Pawn shop politics. Framer fell in love with one. I sold it to him for fifteen hundred bucks. You Cash sold the other poster? Yeah, dude, we're, we broke even already. If I wanted to sell them, I would have done it myself. I want to keep them. Oops. Go back to the frame shop and get it back. Dude, are you serious? Wells Fargo Strongbox. A customer named Bill approached Rick to sell a ball and chain, handcuffs, and a pawn box. What do we have here? Well, we got a Wells Fargo strong box and some antique ball and chain. OK, you do have a ball and chain and a few old uh, handcuffs. I've had a ball and chain for 50 some years, son. <laughs> Don't talk about my mother that way. The pawn box was a Wells Fargo strong box from the 19th century, which was used to transport valuable items such as currency, gold, and silver. Here's my concerns. When they forged chains back in the 1800s, it was just hot welding together. You know, get it hot, beat it together. 1800s, they didn't have arc welding. It was all done by a blacksmith. That's why I have a problem with these chains. They're electrically welded. And my other big concern, never in the history of any prison did they ever have their name put on the balls. OK, so what are you trying to say? It's fake. But the box might be real. Rick doubted the authenticity of the ball and chain and handcuffs. However, Rick agreed to purchase the strong box for $450. Box, I'll give you 400 bucks for it. I want $1,200 for it. No, you don't. I'll give you 400 bucks for the box, and I will get one of my guys to help you carry all this stuff out. Uh, 800. I, I see me getting 600 bucks, maybe. I'd like to at least get $500 for it. I'll meet you in the middle of 450. All right. All right. Yeah, uh, I'm right. pretty little filthy. Later, Mark examined the strong box and confirmed that it was fake. Okay, 19th century strong box, Wells Fargo. Let's take a look here. So, first things first, have you already bought this? That sounds bad. I've already bought it. I don't have good news for you. This is a complete fantasy piece, it's a complete fake. Damn it, Rick. Turns out that Bill had attempted to sell Rick a counterfeit item, Marilyn Monroe's handwritten poem. In this episode, the authenticity of a handwritten poem claimed to be written by Marilyn Monroe was called into question. A seller named Jason had presented the poem along with a signed picture and claimed that one expert had appraised the item at $48,000. I've got a Marilyn Monroe signed picture and a handwritten poem. Wow. As well as the obituary of the man that she wrote it to and his tags. This could be very valuable. She was kind of known for responding to letters herself. Marilyn probably connected with normal people because she came from a pretty humble background. I mean, she was practically royalty. I like to think of this as the lost Marilyn poem because there's no obvious documentation. Have you ever had this checked out? I have. Four experts looked at it. So what was it appraised at? It was appraised at $48,000. You got any paperwork with it? I don't have any paperwork. Tell you what, mind if I have a buddy of mine come take a look at it? Wonderful. Corey called Steve to inspect the item, where he ultimately determined that the signature was not authentic and the poem was fake. So what are your concerns here? It's almost too good to be true. I'm gonna pull out some exemplars. Now, something that's striking about this photo, the secretary used to sign a lot of her correspondence, used to like to use a red pen, and that's what we're looking at here. That's disappointing. Yeah. Next, I'd like to analyze the poem, and I brought a sample of her handwriting here today. This is signed earlier in the 50s. When I start to compare both of these together, you go over here to the poem, it's two different worlds. Yeah, they look absolutely nothing alike. This was unfortunately penned in someone else's hand and not Marilyn Monroe's. 
Does it have any value? Probably the, the photo postcard. You're probably looking at something that's in the $40 to $50 range, just as a collectible. Well, as it sits, there's really nothing I can do with it. Thought it was real. It's disappointing, but I, I very much appreciate your time. Both Corey and Jason were left in disbelief upon learning the news that the item that they had believed to be unique and valuable piece turned out to be worthless. Napoleon Letter A customer brought in a letter signed by Napoleon himself, along with a certificate of authenticity and a seal that appeared correct for the period. So what do we got? This is a letter signed by Napoleon himself. That's really cool. This is the type of seal they used back then, so it does look right for the period. Okay, it seems like it's from a pretty legit company. What do you want for it? Well, you know I'm gonna say like 10 grand. The customer was looking to sell it for $10,000, but Core negotiated and purchased it for $2,000. 10 grand's just way too much. You're gonna have to come down quite a bit, man, 1,500. That sounds low. How about uh, five? I'm gonna have to get this reframed. It's gonna be work involved. How about 4,000? I'll give you 2,000 bucks for it, man. That's the best I can do. I didn't pay that much for it, so uh, let's let's do it. 2,000? 2,000. All right, sweet, man. I'll meet you right over there. However, Rick was not satisfied and insisted on verifying its authenticity with an expert. Check it out. Original Napoleon document with certificate of authenticity. That's freaking sweet. I mean, you just don't see that. You just bought it? Yeah. Hey, man, it's your lucky day. Have you had it checked out by anybody? No, it looked right to me. I'm not going to sell something like this to someone for 12 grand and not know for sure it's real. Why don't you go down and see Greg, see what he has to say. Later, Corey took the letter to a history professor at the UNLV, who confirmed that the letter was not genuine and was a complete fake. This is it, man. It's supposed to be an original document signed by Napoleon. Well, let's take a look at what we've got. So what we've got here is very clearly a replica of a very important document. <clears throat> okay, how can you tell? A handwritten ink document from this period, we would see evidence that somebody had written this out with a pen. We would see where there are blobs of ink, and we'd see that the ink would have faded in color. Can't say that this is worth very much as a historical artifact. Well, there goes $2,000 down the drain. This incident served as a significant lesson for Corey and highlighted the importance of seeking expert opinions before making such high value purchases. Gibson Mandolin. A vintage Gibson Mandolin was brought to the shop by a customer named Mark who wanted $3,000 for it. I have a Gibson mandolin. All right, well, let me call my boss over here. Hey, Rick, Corey. I guess no one's here. No, I know a little bit about these things. They're from the early 1930s. The thing that makes this mandolin special is that Gibson made it. I see the sticker in there. Tells me that this is authentic. Great. Despite Chumley's attempt to get Rick and Corey to check for the mandolin's authenticity and condition, they were not available at the shop. Chumley negotiated with him and they agreed on a price of $1,500. Maybe we can make a deal. What are you trying to get for well, it? Well, I'd like to get three grand out of it if I could. Would you be willing to go uh, any less? I actually have a spending limit of a thousand bucks. I don't mind walking out of here with it. How about 1,300? What do you say 1895? You're killing me, man. I'll go 14 and that's pushing the barrel. 1,500 and we got a deal. 15 sounds fair. I can make a 15? profit. 15? I appreciate it. However, when an expert evaluated the mandolin later on, it was revealed that it was not an authentic Gibson mandolin and was only worth about $100. Hey, check out what I brought down today. Mandolin, huh? I thought I'd get it all checked out by you. All right, man. It says the Gibson on it. Yeah. There's a couple things here. The decal, you can see where it was cut out with some scissors. On this mandolin, it would have been inlaid or silk screened. It wouldn't even have been a decal. And it's not even a G that Gibson ever used. And the finish. It's like plastic, and this pick guard is totally wrong. This is fake as hell, man. This is... I hate mandolins. Corey and Chum's mess up. In this incident, Rick was left furious after Corey made a massive mess up at the pawn shop. Hey, what do you got here? The biggest collection of pawn shop movie posters you'll ever see. All of them one of a kind. All pawn shop movies. Yeah. This is cool. Damn, this one's huge. That's cool. You know, all in all, they're in pretty damn good shape. So you want two grand. Yeah? I'll give you a thousand bucks. For all four? For all four. Probably the best I could do for you would be around 1600. 1400? 1500, we have a deal. It's a deal, man. After buying vintage movie posters from Steve, Corey framed them for the store. However, he sold one of the posters without Rick's permission to a framing expert who showed interest in it. What's up, man? Hey, Corey, how you doing? Got some posters for you. Now, these are nice guys. You don't usually see this anymore. So, what'd you guys have in mind for these today? Typical museum glass, black wood frame. I'm assuming you uh, are going to be selling these. 
And that's what I do, man. So what do you think about this one? How much do you think it's worth selling for? I'll do a fifteen hundred for it. Okay, I could probably do fifteen hundred. Deal, David. All right, sounds good, man. When Rick found out about the situation, he was extremely upset and demanded Corey to bring the poster back. Sweet, these look nice, guys. Where's the other one? Pawn shop politics. Framer fell in love with one. I sold it to him for fifteen hundred bucks. You Cash sold the other poster? Yeah, dude, we're, we broke even already. If I want to sell them. I would have done it myself. I want to keep them. I mean, I can't get pawn shop stuff like this every day. You yeah. actually bought art for the store. Yeah, I mean, they're cool. They're pawn shop stuff. I got a spot all cleared out on the wall for them. Oops. Go back to the frame shop and get it back. This incident caused a rift in the team and highlighted the importance of communication and respecting the store's policies. Pokemon cards. Stacks of pristine Charizard Pokemon cards were up for sale by a collector named Gary. These cards were known to be rare and Gary was asking for $500,000 for these cards. I have probably the world's number one Pokemon collection inside this case. Chump, this guy's got Pokemon cards. This is pretty cool, man. They're pretty cool. Actually, some of them can be worth a lot of money. The most expensive card is probably the pristine 10 first edition base Charizard. And how much is that worth? 50 to 100,000. Whoa. So how much do you want for these things? I'm looking for right in the area of $500,000. Do you mind if I have someone look at this? That's fine. To confirm the collection's worth, Rick brought in an expert who verified the authenticity of the Charizard cards and their significant value. Although Gary was ecstatic about the assessment, Rick was still uncertain about making the purchase and finding a buyer who would be willing to pay the asking price. Graded 10s? I believe there's less than 50. PSA 10s in existence. By looking at this, there's 20% of the market sitting on your counter. This is a one-of-a-kind collection. What do you think this stuff is worth? This one here, there's only one of them in existence. There's no other graded a 10. This card could go 30 to 40,000. Altogether, 380 to 390,000 for this collection. Really? Rick, throw them out of offer. I'm not gonna make an offer. It's out of my skill set. I'm not gonna be able to sell something I don't understand whatsoever. So I'll make them an offer. Not with my money. I don't have the knowledge or expertise to sell these things. Thanks for bringing it in. Thank you. Although Chumley was interested in purchasing the Pokemon cards, Rick did not make any offer to Gary. Babe Ruth Baseball Cards The 1915 Babe Ruth Baseball Card brought by a customer named Derek to the shop. Derek was looking to sell the card for $65,000, and Rick was eager to buy it, considering it a rare find. I have a Babe Ruth Baseball Card. I found it in our shed in our backyard. You just found it in a shed? It was a lot box. Baseball cards like this uh, were generally sold in cigarette packs. This one, I find it a little weird that it's got a newspaper advertisement on the back of it. Do you have an idea what you wanted for it? $65,000. They've been faking these things since the 40s and the right. 50s. I'm not going to say it's real until I have someone else look at it. That sounds awesome to me. Rick wanted to ensure its authenticity, so we called in an expert, Jeremy. What's going on, Rick? You got an old Babe Ruth card, man. You got to be kidding. This is just awesome. Babe Ruth items, they appeal to any collector. What you have here is one of Ruth's earliest cards, and it's the very first ever feature him in his major league uniform. On this one, we have the Tribune advertisement, which of the two Babe Ruths, this one's the more preferred one. So is it real? It's not mint, but it's not bad. And what's amazing about it, the centering is almost dead on. Now, as far as value on this, nothing. What we have here is not a real card. The whole texture is off, the coating on the surface, and especially the printing. So this is without a doubt a reprint. Ah, well, it's a bad day now. Sorry, man. We'll have a good one, though. You too. The disappointment was evident on both Derek and Rick's faces as Derek left without a deal. Jimi Hendrix Stratocaster. The Jimi Hendrix Stratocaster is a rare item that was brought to Rick by a man named David. So what do we got here? I think there's something in here you're really going to like to see. Okay. 1963 American-made Fender Stratocaster. Oh, to me, this is the guitar. There's something very, very special about this specific guitar. This guitar was actually played by Jimi Hendrix. Do you mind if I pick it up? No, absolutely. By all means. All right. This is the Holy Grail. He actually held this guitar that you now have in your hands and made wonderful music with it. Is there any pictures of him playing it on stage or anything? Or No, because he, it was exclusively played in the studio. This was his really favorite sort of recording acts. I'm going to set this down. <laughs> <laughs> David claimed that the 1963 American-made Fender Stratocaster guitar was exclusively used by Hendrix in the studio. Rick was interested in the guitar and asked David how much he wanted for it. David's asking price was $750,000, which Rick found skeptical. And where did you get this? It was actually owned by a guy named Skip Jarrett. There was a, a studio called Juggy Sound Studio that Jimmy loved to cut in okay. up in New York. Skip was the chief engineer at Juggy Sound Studio. And after they wrapped up all the production on Band of Gypsies and all that, they gave this guitar to Skip. When he passed away, one of my business associates and I acquired the guitar. Plus I have, you know, a letter signed by Jimmy's brother. 
I have seen where people had letters from the family. Right, right. Okay. okay. And it okay. turned out not to be what they said it was. Right. That's the one big thing that scares me. How much do you want for the guitar? I'd be willing to take, say, 750000 for it. I have a friend who, if this thing is real, he will know. And if not, he'll call bull****. All right, I'll be right back. Give me awesome. a few minutes. Okay, thanks, man. He decided to call on a friend who knew more about guitars to verify its authenticity. Jesse examined it thoroughly and declared it was 100% genuine. This is stupid cool. I mean, <laughs> Jimmy's one of Jimmy's guitars. I want to make sure this is 100% before we start talking a lot of money. You mind if I take a look at it? By all means, that's why you're awesome. here. The tremolo bar. These are usually bent and angled up. You play the guitar upside down. He flattened a lot of these out made straight. Another thing is what they call ring wear. If you're playing the guitar like this, my wedding ring hits the guitar, removes a lot of the paint. If you look at this guitar, the top side of the neck has a lot of that wear. That's from the guitar being this way. Now Jimmy would have played it. This serial number here, this guitar has actually been documented. No doubt, this is definitely one of Jimmy's guitars. In my head, I think I know what it's worth, but what do you think? Anywhere from 750 to good auction million. All right, thanks, man. All right, man. Despite Rick's final offer of $600,000, David refused to sell it for less than $750,000, so no deal was done. Let me give you $450,000. $450,000? For a guitar that could fetch maybe a million dollars on any day, your guy, own guy just told you that. Okay, but what uh, we Come on, four hundred fifty grand. Yeah, I'm thinking seven fifty, dollars man. I'll give you half a million. This guitar's worth more than that. If you want the money now, I can go five fifty. dollars Knowing that it could potentially fetch a million dollars at an auction, I can't leave that much money on the table. Uh, seven fifty, dollars really, man, that's a, that's a bottom dollar I can take for the guitar. Hey, okay, well, have a nice day. Tell me if it goes to auction, I might bid on it. <sighs> Thanks, man. Well... Six? I can't do it, man. But I'll call you if I change my mind. Rick was disappointed as this item could have made a substantial profit. This is where we'll end our video. We hope you enjoyed watching. Make sure to comment, hit the like button, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell for more videos like this. Share this video to your family and friends. See you soon.